please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Uh, for India, for Indian women and for the Fogat family, I mean, yeah. uh, how many girls of that family have been uh, able to bring India so much and, honor? And, and, for the state of, and for the state of Haryana. Of course. And I belong to that state, so obviously, <laughs> you know. And for we'll, Mahavir Fogat, we'll right? He morning. trained her as well. Yeah, I mean, exactly. what a proud moment for him, Absolutely. back to back. And for Amir Khan. <laughs> no, I, I, for Amir Khan, it's more money because uh, obviously there is, uh, uh, yeah, there is publicity, uh, you know, which comes for that movie because of uh, the performance of yet another person from the Fogat family. But yeah, kudos to him to have thought of such a good theme yeah. uh, for a movie. I mean, it just establishes uh, that India only progresses forward as far as uh, gender equality is concerned and gender achievements are concerned. Uh, one hopes this is just one of the many examples and many more will follow. Follow. Well, uh, there is a lot of celebration on the screen as well, so we have to come back to that. I meant the trading screen, the uh, uh, Wall Street indices ended in the green yet again, a quarter percent across the board. Never mind what uh, President Trump is saying about uh, Powell or about Russia or about Turkey or about China or about Iran. He has commented on everything in the press conference, but uh, Wall Street continued its climb. Asia is a little under trouble. Uh, I mean, it's difficult to ascribe reasons. Uh, probably it's because uh, there isn't too much of market moving data. My guess is it's also because the US dollar has weakened. Mm. Uh, I mean, after that strength, usually currencies do well when uh, equities do well when their currencies weaken. It seemed like they would have a currency advantage. Now that advantage is gone because the dollar index has stumbled. Look, from 97 last week, remember it was 96, 98 yeah. on one day, Thursday, I think and now gone to 95.4. So clearly, uh, you know, as a counter, the uh, emerging market currencies are stronger. Rupee is definitely going to get stronger today. The yields have also fallen. Mm. So because the rupee is strong, inflation looks weaker. And therefore, Indian bond yields will go down. So today, my sense is, while the advantage that the bulls have will continue, there will genuinely be a sector rotation. Mm. Today, it can't be IT and pharma. Today, the baton uh, in all probability should pass on to the financials. It should be banks and NBFCs is my guess. Okay, well, that could be possible because even yesterday, if you looked at the uh, the gains in the index, the Nifty was up 80 points. It was split across sectors. So if you look at, you know, the top three gainers, LNT, there was uh, Reliance Industries, there was HDFC. So it was so secular, really, the move, 20, 20 points each. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're seeing broad-based buying. I mean, yesterday, if you look at the numbers as well, DI has bought almost 600-odd crores. Uh, Anuj Morning, uh, this is a market that is clearly in the mm. grip of the bulls. But what next? You know, do we see a lot more participation coming from uh, heavyweights that were underperformers earlier? LND, for example, mm. was the big mover mm. yesterday. You see broader participation coming in? Yeah, uh, morning, Sonia. See, it's about risk reward. Uh, the Nifty is up 170 points in two days. The template of the market has been one step back, two step forward once again. So you have to buy when that one step back is being taken, not when the two steps forward are being taken. Because yeah. in that case, uh, obviously the market will still reward you perhaps and will still make a new high, but boils down to risk reward. You, know, you should measure your risk reward and then take a trade. The big trade is to buy dips and consolidation because uh, shorts are being taken to cleaners in this market. Uh, the market's breadth for the last few days has been the best for the year. Mm. This, after a long time, People are feeling good about the market. The, the portfolios are doing well. Uh, you know, till July, while the Nifty was hitting new high, portfolios were not doing well. Now portfolios are doing well. Almost all sectoral indices have participated in the rally uh, uh, this this month. And I think the one sector which was missing and which perhaps started a participation yesterday, and I'll talk more about that in top ten, is the auto index. Uh, that was the one uh, index which was perhaps not participating in the rally. Yesterday you saw that also participate. So uh, that could be the, in fact, uh, you know, perhaps uh, index to watch out for. The bank Nifty has got its mojo back after one week underperformance. Yesterday the way PSU banks rallied. My only uh, issue is, you know, that I take all, all the points is, mm. that, you know, yesterday we had a big, you know, PSU mm. bank rally in last half an hour. So how so much? Then of you this, worry whether it can. Exactly. Benefit. How much of this is in the price? It was up two percent at index level. Uh, Anyway, the focus should be on high quality nifty junior stocks, non nifty large caps, even nifty stocks, uh, decent quality mid cap stocks as well, uh, because this is a market which is not rewarding you for buying good quality stocks. Okay. You know, it's just that the PSU banks have fallen so much uh, that yeah. yesterday's Credit Suisse report that, uh, you know, clearly at uh, both at industry level and at individual bank level, 
Q4 of last year was the worst quarter and Q1 actually showed healing mm. across the board in most banks may have also had something to do. So th there could be a reason to have a two-day rally as well on PSU banks sure. considering that they have had a multiple year fall. Okay, well, let's tell you what our wise men have to say as we head into trade this morning. Uh, we have first up uh, Sayan Mukherjee of Nomura, who remains positive on earnings growth. He says consolidated earnings for Nifty companies should rise by 25% compounded annual growth over FY18 to 20. He says the strong run-up in certain stocks in 2018 so far has read, led to stretched valuations that imply expectations of very high growth, leaving little scope for a slip. Science says taking cognizance of the valuation multiple, they are selective, their key overweight sectors are autos, financial, healthcare and gas distribution distributors, while they are underweight consumer staples and IT services. Okay. Well, that's tall and yesterday I think uh, Neelkant was also telling us that the ex uh, consensus expectations are 20% uh, uh, next year, over a 30% this year. So 25% CAGR over two years is what uh, uh, Nomura is talking about. This is, of course, uh, the consensus market view. Money market views now. This one comes from Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank. He says the Greece bailout ending, Donald Trump not being enthused about Fed rate hikes in Turkey, are the headlines that would be the base for today's USDI in our move. He says we might see the pair continue to consolidate below the 70 mark and the range he is looking forward to is 69.65, 69.80 for the day. Yesterday I think it ended at 89, 69.89. Okay. So this is a fair decent amount of appreciation he's expecting. In the room. Okay, so a uh, tad bit of recovery is what we've seen. 69.82 okay. is where uh, the Stopped. market closed yesterday. But Bhaskar Panda says the Indian bond yields uh, are also expected to remain sideways today. He expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to remain within the 7.8 to 7.85 percent range. <coughs> okay, let's talk about the global queues then. Here's Mangalam with the world view. Positive moves on the global markets continue. So we saw a shade of green across all the three indices on the Wall Street yesterday as well. And the S&P 500 is now just about 1% away from its record high. A couple of stocks that led the market move higher on the Dow. It was Nike, which was up by about 3% on the back of a brokerage upgrade. Netflix up about 3.5%. That's primarily because the company said they are looking to test ads on their platform. Uh, we're talking about our bull market, but the S&P, there was a statement which said their bull market is as old as 3400 53 days now, barring 120% downtick in this period, it is the longest bull market in history. So on that cheerful note, let's also fly across to Europe. Out there we saw a shade of green across the three main indices, uh, lowering worries of trade wars as well as lowering worries of increased Fed hikes is what is cheering the markets. We saw some money come back in the emerging markets as well. Russia as well as Brazil ended in the green after losing some steam in the previous trading session. Asia more or less mixed barring the Nikkei. All the other indices are in the green. The Nikkei 2 is off its lows. And the SGX Nifty, that one should come up for you, indicating a flattish start, but we will see where it goes. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, neat wrap, uh, Mangalam. Uh, with this, we concentrate once again on the Indian markets and we have an expert doing the, uh, to help us. Uh, this week could mark the longest bull market in history by completing some 3,400 days of uh, uh, rise in the markets. Arvind Sanger, managing partner of Geosphere Capital Management, joins us now. Uh, good evening, Arvind. Thank you very much uh, for sitting up for us. Uh, but then we want you to join in uh, the celebration that uh, uh, the bulls have been having on uh, Dalal Street day after day. Uh, what's the lesson? Uh, step into it, move with the uh, tide or stay out because you think it's too ferocious? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the most heartening thing is that the earnings uh, are starting to show up in a meaningful way. And the economic data in India, uh, other than obviously what's going on with the rupee, but every other economic data point that we look at from a bottom-up standpoint, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned, uh, I think, in your uh, segment earlier, about what's going on with uh, airline traffic, but we look at airline traffic, we look at hotel traffic, we look at uh, uh, auto sales, we look at uh, commercial vehicle sales, we look at, uh, you know, electricity demand. You look at almost any economic statistic uh, and things are going, uh, you know, gangbuster. So I think that the earnings season uh, was one of the best we've had in several years uh, in terms of both top line and bottom line growth. Uh, and I think uh, the market's getting confidence that, you know, uh, that uh, notwithstanding uh, 
modest weakening in the rupee and uh, the political uncertainty before an election year, the economic fundamentals uh, mm. from a bottom-up standpoint are, are very solid. Okay. Uh, Arvind, hi. Good morning. Uh, uh, what about Indian market? Because we have seen, uh, after a long time, the market breadth improving, uh, you know, the mid-caps are participating. You, you reckon the, you know, the three or four month period that we had of a big bear market in mid-caps, uh, is that over? Uh, I think it looks like uh, uh, it, the mid-caps are also riding the wave of good economic fundamentals. So, you know, again, uh, the global risks notwithstanding, and I think the global risks, we have lived through some of the fears. Global trade war, that fear seems to be somewhat receding. Uh, it doesn't look like that's about to break out in a big way. Uh, and Fed rate hikes, I think the market's gotten used to the fact that uh, the U.S. Fed is on a steady, steady rate improvement cycle, but is not looking to do anything dramatic that will, uh, you know, cause liquidity to, to dry up. So as long as the global queues uh, remain well behaved. The Indian economic fundamentals are such that there's no reason uh, that the mid caps should be left behind. And, and I think uh, the Indian HNIs and others who were hurt in the last uh, few months with the massive sell off that the mid caps uh, uh, saw, uh, you're starting to see money come back. So I think all of those reasons suggest uh, that uh, uh, mid caps should also start to participate. So, yes, one, one of the things that you mentioned that I think is very important is we talked a few weeks back when the rally was very narrow. Uh, what is encouraging now is that uh, the rally is much more broad-based, and I think that uh, that's a more solid way uh, for the rally to have legs. Actually, I wanted to take that point forward because we are seeing a sort of a secular move in the market over the last couple of weeks. Whether you talk about uh, participation coming in from LNT, corporate lenders have picked up. Reliance, of course, has assumed leadership for the last uh, you know few months. Uh, where do your preferences lie now? Well, I mean, our preferences have always uh, been with bottom-up stories where fundamentals are improving. But you know, we think some of the Export-oriented, uh, you know, auto parts companies are uh, certainly benefiting from uh, from a weaker rupee. The IT names obviously have been benefiting from weaker rupee. But you know, the economic fundamentals domestically, there were some fears about uh, about what's going on in the uh, uh, in the CV market because of certain regulatory changes. But I think the CV market seems in good shape. I think the domestic auto market seems in good shape. I think the infrastructure spending seems in good shape. So plays on all of those. And then, you know, Reliance is really a play on domestic, both consumer uh, in terms of the retail franchise and, and on uh, Geo and their telecom franchise. And I think uh, there's, uh, you know, good strength uh, and there's future opportunities as, as the broadband uh, distribution in India grows. Uh, people who benefit from that or play on that could be, could be winners as that plays out. So I think there are emerging themes. I think uh, you know some of the banks, laggard banks like ICICI Bank, have been have been huge winners as people are getting uh, you know past the concerns about the leadership issue and looking at the fact that economic fundamentals are improving uh, and the bad debt cycle. You know whether it's for some of the uh, PSU banks uh, and, or for some of the lagging uh, private sector banks are, are behind us. So I think the financial sector there are. Uh, some of the laggards that look quite interesting uh, in, in, in that space too. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you know, do valuations worry you at all? I mean, uh, we, we are trading at perhaps uh, uh, one standard or sometimes maybe even more uh, deviation to our normal uh, uh, price to earnings. So many would argue that there's excellent earnings. We have people telling us that it's going to be 25% uh, compounded annual growth for both this year and next. Uh, would you worry that that's also in the price? Well, uh, certainly, if you look at you know uh, some of the high-flying uh, market leaders, uh, I think that's a very worry that is uh, well-founded. Uh, but I think that's a worry that uh, could be shared across the globe. You know, if you look at the technology fang leaders in the U.S., there's been similar concerns expressed there. So I think you know we're in we're not in the early stages of this bull market. Let's be clear about that. So. One has to look harder to find values, and one has to find emerging themes. You know, uh, we think uh, things like uh, uh, the you know hotel industry, the travel industry, the uh, uh, you know the, some of the emerging themes, even things like real estate, which have lagged. That's where some of the values may lie because the cycles are just beginning. 
but uh, there are other parts of the cycle which are very far along where valuations are rather rich and, and we have a hard time uh, investing there. So I think that's the problem with making a market call. The market clearly, as you said, uh, is, not, is not cheap. Uh, and that's uh, what creates a challenge. But that's where the mid-cap opportunities come in because you look the at, stocks value. Will you, will you look at real estate, uh, Arvind? Yeah. Yes. I think that's uh, an emerging theme for us. Mm. That's a mark, uh, market segment that has been left for dead for a long time. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, post rare it is creating a market for organized uh, players to gain market share. Uh, and there is pent up demand. And so I think whether, you know, people have played it largely as we have in the last few years by playing the NBFCs, which are, you know, providing mortgage mortgages to real estate, uh, you know, uh, uh, to owners. Uh, but I think the opportunity now could switch to a sector that has been hugely overlooked and, and highly underperformed. Uh, which is uh, some of the real estate uh, companies themselves. Oh, yeah, and DHFL really has been the st one of the stocks of the last few days, uh, uh, along with, of course, a couple of real estate plays. Uh, uh, Arvind, uh, you know, let's not forget we are almost at August end, uh, just two or three months to go for four big state elections, and then, of course, uh, next year the general election. There was just one opinion poll about two weeks back which indicated that perhaps uh, uh, things could not be you know, too good for the, the ruling party, at least in the three big states. Uh, uh, you reckon as we move forward, that, that could be a bit of a spoil spot for uh, for Indian market? Well, I mean, I think the political risks that the market was worried about three months back are unlikely to disappear. So I think they will recur as we move through the year. That is going to be, if I look at headwinds for the market, and let's talk about that. We've talked about all the good stuff. If you look at the headwinds for the market, then, you know, the political uncertainty leading up to uh, uh, the elections, which, you know, for, for the Lok Sabha, which I, I, I guess uh, could be held any time between, uh, you know, later this year and May of next year. We don't know when those will be, but that, that will be an overhang on the market. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the current account deficit and the rupee and, and what happens there is another headwind. Uh, for, for the market to the extent that it affects inflation, but certainly for us as overseas investors, uh, you know, rupee dollar is, is a headwind. And then uh, global uh, cues on trade war and other things uh, that could uh, that could upset the apple cart. So those are things. But India specific, I think the two things to worry about are the elections and uh, the rupee and the current account deficit. So uh, is this, a, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats sort of situation globally, Arvind? The, do you think for the rest of the year it's going to be, uh, you know, a U.S. market-led recovery which will take emerging markets higher as well? Or do you think emerging markets could now, now start outperforming developed markets for the rest of the year? Well, uh, emerging markets have clearly been laggards. But I think for them to outperform, they still need uh, the U.S. market and the global uh, developed markets to to stabilize and, and maybe to move a little bit upward. So I think the, uh, the best scenario would be that the U.S. market continues to, you know, be stable to upward uh, trending. The dollar stops, uh, you know, being as quite as, uh, uh, as strong. And, you know, the Turkey-related contagion fears to emerging markets subside. Uh, and then we can start to see an emerging market rally. So for that, you know, a couple of things need to go right. Uh, but the most important one is that the emerging market uh, fears, you know, that, that have been emanating from uh, the Turkey situation and the spillover we've seen in some of the other countries like Argentina, uh, if those start to stabilize, then I think that provides an all clear for emerging markets. But if the currencies stay weak and there's fear of, of, of currency-driven contagion, uh, then emerging markets would not participate. So I think um, we're hopeful that the Turkey issue is is containable and it's not going to cause uh, broader uh, broader pull down of emerging markets so this could be a time for emerging markets all right uh, arvin sanger it's a pleasure speaking with you thank you very much for staying for staying up for us and wrapping up all the global cues and i think you put your finger on the indian cues that we should watch out for of course it will be the elections uh, in the three states before mm -hmm. the general elections and the trade deficit. I think we mustn't forget that in, in an otherwise fairly decent uh, macro picture, this one stands as a sore mm -hmm. thumb and sometimes it can be an extremely uh, difficult uh, problem 
to tackle and can spoil other macros. Uh, thanks for putting that on the table. This morning, uh, most of the Asian markets are actually trading uh, uh, not too bad. Some of them have recovered from the lows. The Nikkei market is off from the lows, about 140 points. Even in the U.S. markets now, the S&P 500 is less than 1% away from a record high. There were big deals that took place in the U.S. market in the consumption space uh, over the last few days, so that spurred the sentiment there. But what about our own markets? What are the stocks to look at uh, this morning? Um, let's start with our entire team. Team. Anuj, yesterday the big call for the day was Tata Motors. Uh, that worked very well. Uh, what about today? You know, uh, Sonia, actually, just leave one thing. Uh, I'm just looking at the auto index and the way, you know, uh, old economy stocks did well. Uh, I think uh, this the auto index itself is uh, at some kind of, uh, you know, inflection point. And, uh, you know, Tata Motors, of course, was a bit of a short covering call. But if you take a look at most of the auto stocks, uh, yesterday you saw a big bounce. Uh, uh, the the big problem, of course, has been Maruti. But TVS Motor, I think it's a stock which is showing signs of ending a brutal bear market. It's perhaps yesterday, perhaps, uh, you know, marked the bottom of the stock. It fell from 800 to 500. There was massive delivery buying in TVS Motor, mostly by funds. Uh, Nimesh was telling me that there was, uh, you know, a couple of funds who bought it. So that, I think, is, uh, for me, the, the stock to track from here on. Escorts is the other one where uh, big bounce from 200 day moving average, strong delivery buying. Bull market stocks, when they bounce from 200 day moving average, normally make new highs. The stock is down 12% from 52 week high. Basically, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is that you have to now look at where the risk reward is still in your favor. Uh, you know, non nifty, large cap stocks, nifty junior stocks, good quality, high pedigree stocks, where there's been correction and they're showing signs of ending that correction. I think that's where the risk reward right now is the highest. Okay, so that's uh, Escorts uh, and TVS from Anuj. Uh, well, uh, this is a TV80, CNBC TV18 exclusive. Uh, our colleague uh, Ritu Singh reported yesterday that P.S. Jayakumar is likely to get an extension as MD and CEO of Bank of Baroda. Here's what Ritu Singh filed yesterday. Speculation has been rife about where Mr. P.S. Jayakumar will head once his term at Bank of Baroda comes to an end. But we are given to understand from sources that the government will grant an extension to Mr. P.S. Jayakumar to continue as the managing director and chief executive officer of Bank of Baroda for at least another year. Remember, his term was set to end in October of this year and he was in those one of those rare instances a private banker was appointed as the head of a public sector bank by the government in 2015. Uh, now, of course, the extension, according to our sources, is for at least one year, but it could be for a longer period of time. Uh, under Mr. Jay Kumar, you know, uh, the bank has suffered from the same uh, ailments as the rest of the banking industry. However, in the last quarter, the bank was able to report a profit of about 528 crore rupees, but gross NPLs have still remained elevated at above 12% for Bank of Baroda. But all said and done, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jay Kumar uh, will, it seems, Seems uh, likely stay on as the head of the bank for at least another year. Okay, that's on Bank of Baroda. No, actually, that's... I have a feeling the market was probably in on this news. Mm. You know, uh, most of those f uh, private sector appointees have been asked to continue. Mm. Uh, Mr. Padmanabhan, uh, non executive chairman of B Bank of India, mm. and uh, Ravi Venkateshan, non executive mm. chairman of uh, BOB, were both requested to stay on. Ravi Venkateshan chose not to, but uh, Padmanabhan has stayed on, uh, and they insisted that they should stay. Mm. So, uh, it, it was very clear that uh, Jay Kumar's term was three plus two. They didn't hurry up with the announcement or they are not yet hurrying up with the announcement because he joined only in October. Mm. So he has time till then. The till government then. doesn't have to hurry. But it looks like they're very clear about the 3 plus 2. Uh, in the third year, you just give that extension. Uh, okay. And so therefore, it was always uh, there for Mr. Jay Kumar for the asking. Okay, so that's, of course, uh, Bank of Broda's stock to watch. Yesterday, of course, in the last hour, as did the most of PSU banks, it also made a big move. Uh, but this morning, uh, you can apply Murphy's Law to Jet Airways, uh, yeah. Sonia. <laughs> yes, you can. I mean, you know, anything that has to go bad is going bad with Jet Airways. Now, uh, of course, there's uh, a lot of um, uh, company-specific news, but even industry-wise, it's not looking good. So if you look at the industry data, the domestic aviation passenger traffic growth was very healthy in this month of July. It was 21%, mostly because a lot of the companies gave discounts, you know, higher schemes, etc. Indigo came out with that scheme of 1,200 rupees mm. starting flight, uh, you know, for many fares. 
Uh, however, Jet Airways saw the slowest passenger traffic growth of just about half or percent. They've lost market share since the start of the year. Jet Airways plus Jet Light, if you look at it, at the start of the year, the market share was about uh, almost 17 percent. Now it's fallen to about 15.1 percent, so they've lost market share quite a bit. Not just that, the Register of Companies has initiated a preliminary inquiry against Jet Airways with respect to what happened earlier. The, there are reports suggesting that the Ministry of Corporate Affairs is probing allegations of siphoning of funds at Jet Airways as well. So, well, expect more pressure on the stock. Okay. Well, I do wish uh, investigative agencies also don't go overboard because this can be a national disaster and we shouldn't... You know, uh, once again, I want to say the Ernest Hemingway line, uh, you know, how did you go bankrupt first slowly and then suddenly? Sorry. Uh, this is what uh, things can implode pretty quickly and I think everyone, investigative agencies, banks, media, should all worry that we shouldn't create disaster after disaster. Not that siphoning should ever be allowed, mm -hmm. but uh, on a separate note, uh, uh, these are big uh, industries and big companies we're talking about. Uh, Nimesh, uh, ILNFS Financial uh, Services, the Business Standard Reports, yes, has sir. been told to uh, uh, cut its exposure to group companies? Yes, Lada. So that's the report which is uh, which has been, uh, you know, there in the Business Standard today that uh, ILNFS Financial Service, which is the NBFC of, of the parent ILNFS, they've been asked to cut down the debt exposure to the entire group companies. Now, in the listed space, there are three stocks, ILNFS Transport, ILNFS Engineering, and ILNFS Investment Managers. Within that, I think the best of, of the lot is ILNFS Transport, which, uh, which has a market cap of close to 1100 crores. But we don't have the group exposure uh, in terms of individual breakup, but broadly across all the three companies or all the four companies, they'll be asked to cut down the debt exposure because of the fact that they've increased, uh, you know, it's gone beyond the RBI permissible limit. So that will have an impact on the financials of all the th all the three companies, so, uh, red for all the three. But I think the biggest impact will be on LNFS transport because that's where, uh, you know, the pain seems to be the highest. But, uh, uh, you know, even uh, while I was talking to a few analysts to understand the impact, I'm told a lot of banks have already... Uh, you know, indicated that this group is under trouble and, and under stress and there will be uh, write downs for, for this particular group. So watch out for not only these three companies, but for banks which have got huge exposure to LNFS as well. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, uh, we are going to also go across to Anisha to tell us about GMR and why she's watching that one. Anisha? Well, Sonia, there are reports in the papers that suggest that GMR might be looking to raise around $500 million from Eon Capital. And that is because they want to pay back the stake of uh, PEs that they have in GMR airports. Remember, since 2011, actually, uh, uh, PEs like SBM Aquarii, GM Financial, Stancy have put in close to 1,500 crores in the company. And ahead of the IPO, which is expected to see the value of 25,000 odd crores. The PEs are looking to exit the company and that is why GMR is looking to raise around 500 million dollars through a mix of equity as well as debt. Now this is something that Nisha has been pointing out but this is just an extension to that story. Other than that, ILFS transportation, uh, Nimesh already mentioned how it will be in focus. Another negative is that Brickverse has actually revised the rating downwards to A negative and ICRA has actually withdrawn the rating. Back to you. Okay, Anisha, thanks a lot for that. Uh, Mangalam, uh, the telecom subscription numbers are out. That's right, Anut. So filling in for Reema, and she tells us that the numbers do not look very good for Bharti, as well as they show signs of positivity for Idea. So for June subscription data, we had Jio, which added close to around 97 lakh subscribers. We had Idea, which added close to around 6.3, as well as Vodafone 2.75. We had Airtel at 0.1. Jio added most uh, number of subscribers, uh, sustained their run rate over that 90 lakh mark per month. Idea, that one is positive because remember in the May data, they lost about 25 lakh subscribers. And now in June, they've come back and added close to 64 lakh subscribers. That's a positive. Bharti, however, just about 10,000 subscribers is what they've added. Uh, with this, the market share for Bharti now stands at 30. Idea Vodafone combined now stands at around that 39% mark and Geo 18.8%. So positive for Geo, positive for Idea, not so good for Bharti. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Mangalam. Uh, Sonia, uh, Apollo Tires uh, had made some uh, submissions on the Kerala rubber issue? Yes, so we are analysing the impact of what the floods would have on their plants. They have two plants in Kerala, one in Kochi and one in Pirambra. The company has put out a statement saying that the production has been disrupted due to the floods. The loss due to the calamity is 1,500 million tonnes still today. However, the loss of profits is not significant because most of it is covered on the, under the insurance policy. So there could be a bit of green, uh, some relief rally. However, in the medium term, you know, there could be a negative for all these companies because the Kerala 
floods could hit rubber production in a big way. And as we know, Kerala accounts for 85% of the domestic rubber production. This could lead to a shortage of rubber supply and inflate prices. And in the medium term, could put some impact on margins as well. So just keep an eye out on that. Okay, that's <coughs> Apollo tires. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, uh, Anisha, TCS? Well, yes, I know I'm watching out for TCS because unverified reports suggest that the company uh, is, facing a, uh, is facing a trial perhaps and that is what one of the US companies, which is similarly innovation, has asked to uh, pretty much sue the company and this is for an IP infringement. Uh, they have sought the trial for the jury and say that they want to be compensated for the loss of revenue. Remember, TCS had to pay damages worth $420 million just last year uh, in case of an IP infringement. They say that this time, like again, they're going to fight this case and they have the right backing as far as the legal recourse available, but it will be side dampener for the stock today. Okay. Well, uh, these things keep happening to IT companies, but today my own sense is that because of the strength of the rupee, anyway, it may not be mm. IT's big day. We'll wait and see. Ekta, uh, FDC, the pharma company, has some problems? Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, Lata, it's going to be in the red reacting to the fact that the US FDA inspected their facility, which is basically develops uh, eye drops there and uh, was issued eight observations by the US FDA. Maybe the silver lining is that the Malaysian regulators had inspected the facility at the same time as the US FDA, and they issued zero observations, or it, rather it was a successful inspection by the Malaysian regulators, but the US FDA, in a surprise inspection, issued eight observations. Okay, Ekta, I have fond memories of FDC. Uh, as a child, the uh, their cough syrups are very tasty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Uh, for future reference, right, for us. Yes. But uh, here's a quick recap then of our top uh, stocks today. Stocks with positive news flow are uh, Bank of Baroda, TVS Motor, Escorts, Idea Cellular, GMR Infra and Apollo Tires, while stocks with negative news flow this morning, TCS, Jet Airways, Bharti Airtel, FBC, ITNL, Island FS Engineering and Island FS Investment Managers. Uh, but we also have plenty of stocks that are in the news because of some brokerage views. Uh, Sonal is here to give us that list. Hi Sonal, morning. Good morning, Sonia. Well, uh, Credit Suisse has initiated a coverage on Avenue Supermarkets. They have a, an underperformed rating with a target price of 1,150 rupees per share. They think the valuations are factoring in a bull case scenario, but that does not look very well with the margin of safety, which is at the lower levels. Also, because the company is opening stores outside its core markets, that will put some pressure on the margins. Uh, UBS has written on Tata Motors. They maintain their neutral stance, but they have cut the target price to 280 from 370 rupees per share. They think that balance sheet can't continues to re-leverage, but risk-reward is not so compelling, and JLR, that is something that continues to disappoint the markets. Macquarie has written on metals and mining. They think that the demand environment is very supportive and the global growth is above the long-term average. However, there are some headwinds for the uh, sector, that is the trade war, uh, war uncertainty and also the China deleveraging that is happening. Hindalco, Coal India, Tata Steel and Pargrid are the top picks, and they are positive on Vedanta, but neutral on Hinzink. Macquarie has written on cements. They think the capacity addition uh, estimate is at 4% versus 11%. Their top picks are uh, Ultratech, Shri Cement and Dalmia. However, they are neutral on uh, Ambuja and ACC. Uh, Deutsche Bank has written on the realty sector. They think the worst is behind. Their top picks are Sobha, Godrej Property and Obra Realty. They also think that DLF will do better because of the positive cash flows and they think Rera is doing well for the sector. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So those are some brokerage views. We'll keep... Uh, you know, uh, in uh, flashing those views on the screen as well.